guys over there filming. The guy with the white shirt and the guy with the black shirt both had their cell phones out filming everywhere around. There's cops on the right, there's a horse shot behind them. This horse here, he's got scarring on his hindquarters. He's got scarring on his hindquarters. Other horses. Yeah, I do a like close that. up. That's that's the uh, that's zoomed out. I do a close up in a sec. Yeah. Now I'll close in, and it, the focus will adjust. How's that? You're like old. Huh? Yeah. yeah. They're like old. I wonder what they're from. I bet a veterinarian can tell us what the common cause of that would be. This little horse here's jumpy. What's that sergeant's name? Scalawag or this lion smiley fucker? I don't remember. I don't either. Not important. How are you doing, man? How are you? How are you? This is my last weekend that I get to film you guys. I go back to Oregon on the set. Awesome. Do you guys do any cover out there mostly? Portland or? Like, if one wanted to speak up, could they do that in, in San Antonio? They saw another cop doing something illegal. Like, like, do you think that would happen there? Uh, less uh, there the gang year. is not going to split and narc on the rest of the gang. It's very protective. Yeah. I know some good cops. They're ex-cops. They tell me to watch out. 
I actually know a few in Oregon that are decent, decent guys. Yeah. I'll met people that were nice to me. I would take them home and let them fuck my sister, but they're yeah, decent exactly. guys. Exactly. I won't let them date my sister. No fucking way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so how long have you been a supervisor? About a year. A little less than a year. So you just made it. Yeah, I was a detective for 14 years. They start uh, 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 Portland Police Bureau officers at about 58, 60k. What do they start you guys at? If, if, uh, uh, into the... Not that high. Really? Portland's one of the highest paid in the country. Are they? Yeah, the starting, starting first year you get $58,000 in, in uh, Portland. That's good. Yeah. I, some of our sergeants and captains make close to like 100k a year. We got lots of people over 100 grand. Yeah. All across the city, not just the police department. We got other here? other people making over 100 grand. Yeah. What is the starting wage here? I have to ask. Well, it's been so long since I've been. I've been on 20 years. So oh right, right. 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 It's been around that, similar to that, probably. Really? Yeah. Probably like the 40k area then. Definitely, the police salaries have gone up a lot. Well, yeah. 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 I can Google it. You can go to uh, Portland.gov and look at that information. Uh, okay. It's pretty easy. I know last time you were here, you mentioned like uh, the disarming of the police. And like UK. I was curious about that. Like, like UK. How do you deal with I was looking at the... some video, like, so they got hooligans or whatever, oh, bikes, for you, though. and they just them. surround them and they walk them away. There's no beat down. There's no, uh, there's no ass tell make bullshit. There's just like, like we would do in an anarchy. We would like have a group. You don't need a law per se. You have social mores. I wonder another question he had. Yeah. Ask you. What was the question? Well, no. Uh, my quote, like I know, like in France, of course, they had a terrorist attack. They didn't have an armed police officer to respond to it. Uh, in France, like the Fourth of July, you know, we had the shooter at the army. Like, how would we respond to something like that? the you guy locked the gun? But you don't carry them around all the time just to use them. They're a special where? case, you know. Where? In the vehicles, or where I don't know. I don't know. Like for instance, well, the United different. Kingdom, like they have, if, if something really bad happens, they have substations all around. They have trained SWAT guys. They don't call them special weapons it's or, or search, or they don't call them something SWAT. They call them something else. But like all over the place, and if something happens, those guys will get immediately responded. But their B cops don't really carry weapons. Like I mean, they carry mace and and batons and. Uh, like, uh, the, the, the big difference between the UK and here is like a lot of us citizens are walking around with guns. Guns are illegal there, guns right. are illegal here, so that's the big, that's the big difference. I don't know, could you, personally, could you, personally how you make that happen without disarming the populace? Personally, my humble opinion, um, there's training issues. Like, you're familiar with distance equals time, right? With what? Distance equals time in the train. Sure. Right. To me, if you're going to draw your weapon before you get close to the subject and you've already committed to it, you know how you have that 22 foot uh, reaction drill? Like if somebody has a weapon or something. Okay, if you're, if you're out here, right? In your holster and then pull a paper out or OC spray, you're committed. And I think that training is flawed. I don't agree with this. Well, I think I like on the uh, Ferguson case. My question is okay, if you, the guy grabs you and you feel like a child. That's right. what he said. Why didn't you wait for your backup? He confronted the guy, the guy charged him. Yeah, exactly what you're saying. He kind of forced that confrontation. Right, the cop. Uh, like you know the guy, the, you the know the guy's gonna defeat you. Yeah. He was he was locked in here and he was the final so he could do it. Well the thing is too that like the whole thing about the unarmed man right. is not anyone who fights a police officer is not an unarmed man. For most for the most respect you gotta say a middle-aged white guy versus a younger athletic like let's say if they just like put him in the moral combat game, point, right. you know. The cop's gonna lose unless he has these tools and weapons. So anyone that's like crazy to fight the person with the firearm, the cop can't lose that fight because the guy's already fighting. I have a gun. He must be crazy. And so 
that whole unarmed man thing is not really a, a true thing. So how do you? I'd be really interested in like how can we deal with it because the public cannot well, stomach that. Here's anymore. my thoughts yeah. on the matter. Yeah. If you look at man hours and police training uh, comparing U.S. any U.S. municipality to anywhere in Central Europe, yeah. like especially like Iceland or uh, Germany or uh, the United Kingdom, right? They put a lot more emphasis on specific types of martial arts training. They emphasize and they put get put a lot more hours into it. It's gonna, it costs more money. I would agree. Into, We're deficient with that. Into grappling, uh, into subduing, into pain compliance at close quarters, right? If they train you guys more in that, your use of force would be quite a bit less. You'd be shooting people a lot less because you would be more highly trained and confident oh, in the use of that. And, and, yeah. and, and, and if somebody went for your weapon, officers losing fights right. results in shootings. Of so yeah, their physical skills right. are... And I'm not talking yeah. about Krav Maga, I'm not talking about striking. I'm talking about uh, uh, compliance, Aikido, Aikido uh, uh, submission holds. Like, you know how, how they have you grab the finger and you're like, you, you know you can torque the wrist when they're in cuffs. And pain compliance, if you have those two fingers, if you don't torque all the way, you're not going to cause wrist damage. So you have control over that. This is one example. They put more emphasis on submission and pain compliance and those types of things, and you guys are more highly trained in that as opposed to the weapons. And another thing, it's cheaper for a municipality to train you guys on a firing range and with OC spray and a on than it is to train, train you with a couple years of martial arts. So it costs them less money. Also, the, the police unions are, are locked into protecting you guys, and that promotes a sort of a attitude amongst cops that, hey, we can go ahead and use this force because our union will protect us. And those are things that need to be well, addressed. It's hard, too. Like, it's so hard to get, like, 10% of everybody who applies, and, like, 10% get to even get through the background check. Sure. you got a lot of people never even been like this in fight before. Because they got to meet all. They can't be a criminal. They can't do that. I mean, they're good people that get to that point. But they don't possess, maybe they're not athletic. Maybe they're not, uh, they don't have you know, the physical prowess that a lot of people that we're going up against have. Sure. And so and that, that they need, that, they need to emphasize on training you guys. Do they have a, a different, different way. group of people that are... The different criteria for hiring these companies that only respond to use force that are better trained? Uh, that's not going to work because they can't be everywhere at once. Yeah, that's true. And then it's cost prohibitive to have that many officers. Yeah. And nobody wants to live in a police state, so we don't want that. Yeah. I mean, I like the community policing model where you guys lock a beat. I'd like to see more citizens interact. come in and, like, you know, yeah. take control of people that are active, you know. That's time. community policing, isn't it? When yeah, we're like, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Before we call the cops, we're supposed to be able to deal with stuff. Yeah, that would, yeah. people have that mind, but they expect, yeah, they expect Yeah, it. if it's just a, like a fight between, like, some guy is, is flirting with some girl at a bar and they're drinking, that's just normal shit. No guns or OC spray or horses need to apply. That's just normal shit. That, that yeah, thing we'll break this, most of those up pretty yeah. well, but yeah. sometimes these very young and fluffy little fist fighting full force is a different animal. But like I was trying to talk to uh, the other one, I didn't want to hear it. Like to get you guys have so much probably material of what well, you feel is good police work. You probably like hey, okay, that, that officer handled that well. His physical skills were good. To like to try to like turn that corner to like it's, to, it's, to it's work really, with police okay. department. It's really hard for those of us that have our perspective. Because, I mean, you have to you have to think about it. What would motivate most of us to be cop And I'll tell you what it is. It's getting beat up or hurt. Police okay. trauma. Yeah. Okay. Like I have bulging disc in my spine. For my dog was shot. Up. My yeah. awesome police. I spent uh, 12 years of my life homeless in uh, San Francisco and LA, Watts, East St. Louis, really fucked up, violent places, and I've had cops kick me, to wake me up. And I don't mean nudge me. I mean kick the shit out of me. You know, I've had cops uh, arrest me and throw away my ID. And the, the funny thing about it is, is that if you're if you have more belongings on you than could fit in an envelope, they put your put your belongings as a homeless person in a uh, warehouse that they only keep for three weeks, right? But you can't get your belongings back if you don't have ID. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I've been seriously fucking abused by God. So a lot of us, that's our animus. So, I feel like so it's hard for us. You guys, when you guys, well do do you guys are well intended. I think you're. Right. Like I watch some of dealer stuff online. Uh, 
Talking to John Stossel, like, yeah, the police are doing, you do a better job when you're president. They're well intended, it's doing a good job. But it's like, with the climate right now, there's a golden opportunity, I should say, you know, to work on positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement. So these, these Honestly, things. it's hard for me to do it, but I do it. He does it. I just did two last night. I, um, two drunk, two different situations, two different sets of cops uh -huh. that, um, had drunk women that didn't go to jail. They helped them get, uh, one of them helped them get a pedicab over here, right here, and another one was still, I thought he was gonna detain a girl, and he's like, I'm gonna make sure you're taken care of, and he ran some guys off. She could have been roofied for all I know. They're doing so those job. are positive reinforcements. A lot of that, come, I, I worked nine years in sex crimes, uh -huh. but when I came down, I said, oh, nice well, for that. the mass majority of the cases, the inception is, in the first sentence, I was down on six with my friends, uh -huh. and, you know, they get taken off and go, oh, let me help you get your ride. They're right to their house instead of their... Yeah. So they're being a lot more conscious about trying to help females. So it's safer to PI arrest them than to leave them out here. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you guys, instead of like, you know, some of the cops like, oh, uh, Randy Deer, terrible, like, hey, here's our top five best cops doing this job right. Uh, like, so everybody, like, aspire to do it, like, in a positive reason. It's like... Like kids that you know need positive reinforcement to function versus yeah. reacting sure. negatively. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, like we're, we're going to try to do more, do more of that. The climate is good for it right now. You guys can really like evolve and do some good because I don't know if you bothered to check out my YouTube channel. Mike I have not yet. There's Mike what? Mike Blue Hair. Okay, I'll look at that. Okay, there's a few videos that I'd like to point out to you. One is uh, when cops and anarchists work as a team. Uh, I walked up on a scene where there was uh, a girl, she had to be on mask. She was barefooted, she was squeaking, obviously. You know, I live on the street, I can tell what drug center is on by looking at me. Okay. Poor girl was walking around in the, the freeway, like three lanes of freeway, barefooted, and the police were trying to get her to consent to go into an ambulance. Uh, I showed up on the scene after they had already been there for half an hour, uh, and me and, uh, uh, he's a sergeant now, he was about to take his uh, sergeant's exam, uh, Officer Aaron Smouse. Uh, he and I talked to her and get into the ambulance and then get some medical help, but they just wanted her to go and get checked out because she was like in a real bad headspace. The poor thing was hallucinating, you know, really horrible time. And Aaron actually, he was the, the acting supervisor, meaning he was in training to be a sergeant like you. Now, um, at one point, she sat on the, 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 the stretcher and then she gets back up and then she's like paranoid again. She's like, I don't want to get in and get in until all the other officers leave. So Smiles sends all the other cops away and say, me, her, and him. And we both sat there and tried to talk to her. And I, and I tell her, you know, I'm filming this for your protection. Like, if the cop ever hurts you, it's going to go to the internet. These guys all know me. They, they, they know that I'm, I, I'm going to make sure they're accountable. And she freaked out about the ambulance. So she's like, no, I don't want to go in the ambulance. You know, uh, uh, Aaron, will you take me to the hospital? She's talking to the cop. And he's like, okay, fine. And he, you know, sends the ambulance away. And then uh, it takes us another, like, 20 minutes to talk her uh, in to get in the car. And she oh, yeah. refused to get into the car until my friend and uh, Bob and I promised to follow behind the car and film her going into the hospital. So, like, in, uh, he actually went into the hospital and uh, walked inside the ER with her, held her hand while she was getting checked out by the EMS professionals, and I went out, waited outside for like 40 minutes until he got back out to the parking lot, parking lot to thank him for, for just being a, a, a stellar, awesome human being. So I do that kind of shit, but here's something for you, okay? From our perspective, uh -huh. most people's worldview in this country does not come from reality. It comes from what media they consume. America is a wash full of pro-cop propaganda. It's true. You have, law, you have 90 versions of law and order. You yeah, have you got that right. Here. Yeah. You have, uh, uh, you know, uh, blue bloods and uh, SWAT-based TV shows, and you know, uh, all these scary ones. That's yeah. right. And what all this does, all these shows have a few common things in common. And they make someone who has a lot of respect for the Constitution and the Bill of Rights infuriating. The only people that talk about their rights in these shows are either assholes or criminals. I think cops tell me that. Right? Uh, honestly, can you look me in the face and tell me how many times a week 
Do you hear someone say, I do not consent to a search? I know my right. Sir, am I being detained or am I free to go? You know? Or do they sit there and uh, allow you to, to get all kinds of data about them in casual conversation where they hang themselves? What is the common interaction with you, honestly? There's no cameras on you. No, no you're right. Yeah, right. They, uh... they fuck themselves. They don't know their rights. <laughs> so, yeah, they portray a scumbag as being somebody who doesn't want to well, pick the right well, shit. Yeah, and in real life, it, and I'm not saying, you know, it's, as far as I'm concerned, the, the Constitution of the Bill of Rights, our first part, our first amendment not to be searched, our first amendment to observe, you know, our fifth amendment to uh, remain silent and not interact with you, uh, interact with you, you know, I think it should be more incumbent on uh, the citizens to understand the rights. Because, personally, if you stop me and I'm going to ask you, you have reasonable, articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime on you know, because I know I have a camera on you, and I know even if you illegally arrest me, right, <laughs> right, right, okay, a lot of activity, yeah, yeah, what's your point? I have to run and tell them what they shoot, what they do. The horses aren't moving. Some of the officers are standing around. Sure, yeah, yeah. I'm going to call you in case you want to film you doing. Yeah, we're going to do Well, there was a conversation.